So why to follow the base practices while doing the customization? If you don't follow the base practices, obviously your customers might face the issues. And they won't be able to use the system properly, right? And again, it, it will create a question in their mind that whether the product is capable enough to handle their business operations or not. So, uh, being, so it's our responsibility, uh, it's developers' responsibility that their work should not uh, suffer the uh, customer's work. So in last few years, I've seen a lot of support tickets because of the customization which was not done properly. Uh, customer has lost their data, some data has, uh, they, they faced a lot of issues, they won't be able to uh, you know, create the records uh, properly. So based on that uh, experience, I have uh, prepared this talk. So I'll, I'm going to use a few use cases, real use cases, and we'll explain like what you should do and what you should, I mean, what you should not do while doing the customization. So this uh, use cases, I split into three parts. Uh, first one is uh, logical, where the the code itself has not written properly. Uh, the next one is the system level, where the customization, because of the customization, uh, there are like database issues occurred. And next is the performance level issues, like because of the customization, the customer was facing the performance issues. So, so I'll start with the logical one. So first use case is like customer wants the additional 10% quantity uh, on a delivery note because during the transit there some items might damage. So this was the real use case. And to implement, the developer has written a server script on the stock ledger entry. So basically, uh, most of you are aware that we create the stock ledger entry on the submission of the stock transactions to maintain the uh, stock ledgers. And he has used the stock ledger entry to uh, implement this logic of additional 10% quantity. But because of that, the quantity on the transaction level and the quantity on the stock ledger does not match. So if I create the delivery, let me create a delivery note. So this was the server script. So let me uh, create a delivery note. So on a delivery note, the quantity was showing the 100. But after submission, if you see the stock, it was showing the different quantity. So because of that, the stock ledger report was not matching with the delivery note trends report. So I asked the like, developer, like, why you did you why you'd, uh, uh, follow this approach? So he mentioned that he, he, he wrote another script before that, where he has used the standard field, uh, standard field of quantity to create the additional 10% quantity. Even with that, there was an issue. So the issue was when the delivery note creates the first on the first save the quantity was calculated correctly as 110, but once the user has selected tax, the system has changed the quantity to 121. So more than many number of save it was changing the quantity. So that's why he wrote the code on uh, code on the server uh, sorry stock ledger entry. So the right approach should be. You should not use the standard or core fields to do the customization, this kind of customization. So what you should follow. So you should create a custom field and uh, keep the, uh, you know, the sales order quantity. So here I created a custom uh, sales order quantity field. 
and I set the sales order quantity in, in that field, and on that, I calculated the additional 10% quantity. So yeah, that's, so next, like mostly devs use the override doc type class. So we added this feature override doc type class in framework to extend the, uh, to extend the class method. But, but sometimes devs don't just extend the specific method, they, ex they basically override the whole complete class. So take an example. So user has created a custom serial and batch bundle class, and it has copied all methods from the original class and pasted as it is here. And he wants to add a one additional validation, and that's why he, he added that validation in the custom class. You can see this validation. So user, uh, developers should understand that the Frappe teams are cons constant, constantly uh, fixing the bugs. Uh, they are constantly uh, improving the code, uh, fixing the security issues. So if you are doing writing such kind of uh, code, uh, their customer won't get the fixes. So then what could be the best case for override doc type class? So, so if you see the doc events, uh, doc events basically have this functionality where you can extend the uh, standard event side. Right? But with the doc events, the standard doc type uh, validate will call first. And after that, the custom app validate will call. But since developer wants to call the, his custom validate function first and then validate the, uh, then the uh, standard doc type validate function, so he, should, he could use the uh, ORAD class, but for that he has to use the super uh, validate function so that it will call the standard doc type uh, method as well. Also, like most of the devs removes the mandatory properties of standard fields. Uh, Frappy teams adds the standard property on the fields because they have written some code on that fields, right? So take an example like one of the dev has removed the mandatory property for the item code in the purchase order because he don't want it to use the item code in the purchase order. I mean, it's fine, like, but obviously then the code won't work, right? And it has broken, the code has broken. So my suggestion for them was use the default item, maybe don't show that to the user, hide the field, whatever the use case you are, following, uh, you are handling, make sure the fields sh uh, should not be, uh, the mandatory property should not be removed. A next use case, uh, so one of the dev has created a custom doc type, delivery node branch transfer, and then he has created a serial and, serial and batch bundle, a stock ledger entry, and GL entry uh, document, again that uh, delivery node branch transfer doc type. So he, so he used the chart GPT and he just copied the code from the chart GPT and pasted in the uh, file. So after that, he started, so he able to submit that document, when, but when he tried to cancel the document, he started facing the issue. Because chart GPT is smart, but chart, chart GPT doesn't understand how ERPNX is complex, right? So try avoiding uh, this kind of customization. Uh, you, he can use the standard doc type, which is a stock entry. And stock entry, with the using stock entry, you can do any operation on the stock. Like you can consume, you can add, you can transfer the stock. And even you can, you can create your own stock entry type. So that's the feature of the stock entry. Next, uh, people add a lot of custom fields. And sometimes while migrating, or updating the site, they face the issue that the row size is too large. Because the MySQL has the limitation, you cannot add just more number of fields. And you can see the how much row utilization done using the customized form for that specific tables. And in case if you, if you are facing this kind of issue, uh, you, you can create a new doc type and move all the custom fields into that doc type and link the uh, your standard doc type to the custom doc type. 
Also, you can use the length uh, property uh, to decrease the character size using the customized form. Also, we have a trim table feature. So what happens when you create a custom, when you delete the custom field, system does not delete the columns from the database. So columns remains, as, remains there in the database. So with the trim table, uh, system removes the such columns from the database as well. Next, explicit commit. And this is like, I don't know why people use the explicit commit, but uh, because of this, I've seen a lot of issues. Uh, so this is, again, a system level uh, bug I'm going to explain. So before uh, explaining the use case, I, will, I would like to explain some database concepts. So every database has a transaction cycle. A transaction cycle start, and there is a lot of SQL queries executes, insert, update, delete. And then Atomicity uh, ensures that all, all should be executed. And if everything is executing properly, then only do the commit. Commit means uh, then only you should uh, allow to save the data in the database. If something went wrong, a specific query has not worked properly because of some syntax error, then the atomicity roll back the uh, complete transaction, even those were uh, executed successfully. So we have maintained the same uh, on, a uh, on a framework level. So not only the query, but also we check the Python code. We, uh, if any Python code breaks because of some syntax error or validation, the system rollbacks the transactions. But uh, but people use the explicit commit, and that 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 ba basically breaks the atomicity. So how that? Uh, create the problem. Let's try to understand with the use case. So the use case was the, the developer wants to transfer the stock from ERP next to third party app. And for that, they have used the stock ledger entry. So again, like once you submit the stock, trans stock transaction, a system creates create the stock ledger entry for each line items. So for implementation, he wrote a code on stock ledger entry. He uh, sent the data to the to the another app uh, another uh, system and get the response from that. So without explicit commit, it was running like let's say there are two line items in the stock transaction. So first stock ledger entry will go. Uh, it will validate whether the stock has there or not. So second line item will go because the second stock ledger entry will create later. Uh, it will get the response from the third party app, and then system will validate whether the stock exists or not. So the implementation was not done properly. He should not use the stock ledger entry because stock ledger entry, again, like it creates for each and every stock line item. So if you have 10 stock line items, a 10 stock ledger entries will be created. Right? So you should do the integration after completion of all, or after creation of all 10 stock ledger entries. And the commit happens after that. So he was facing the, some timeout error. And to solve the timeout error, he has explicitly used the frappe.db.commit in the stock ledger entry on submit method. He has basically override the on submit uh, class method and then use the explicit frappe.db.commit. Now, because of explicit frappe.db.commit, obviously the data has not saved completely. So what happened? Like the first item has sync properly. System has validated. Since he has used the frappe.db.commit, the data has saved in the database. Then system has validated. Next, for the second item, again, the commit has done. But here, the stock was not there. But since the because of the explicit commit, the system has submitted the transaction. So not this use case, but there are another use case. Uh, so one of the invoices, one of the invoice has nine line item. And user has submitted this invoice. But on a stock ledger, only a stock ledger entry is only created for two line items. And this has not happened for one sales invoice. This happened for 700 sales invoices. 
and the customer was like i don't want to cancel the invoice could you please help me to you know repost those sls entry so this happened because of this explicit commit so if you wants to use the frappe.db dot commit explicitly make sure it should not break the atomicity so again like he has used the frappe.db dot commit explicitly so that's why so next is like uh, the customization has done properly uh, during uat the user has not faced any issue but once gola has done the user started facing the performance issue right so to understand that i have a use case so let's say on submission of sales order if the stock is not exist uh, the system should automatically create the purchase order so for that the code was written and uh, again the performance was performance issue was there so i basically used the p run command to understand like which methods are you know running slow and also i check the uh, process list to find out the which queries are uh, running slow so i found i found the code was written in the custom app so if you see the code so this is the this is the code so if you see the code the gate doc has been used and the customer was Uh, not able to submit the sales order which had the more than 500 line items so here the gate dog has been used in a line items and gate dog is a expensive like it gets the information not just on from the parent table but it gets the information from the child table as well and we don't require the object here right because we just have to find whether this item is purchase item or not because we have to create the purchase order for that and uh, a default supplier has mentioned in the item or not so for that a simple sql query can you know but people use the gate dog which you know slow down the performance so avoid uh, this kind of customizations so yeah that's it uh, from my side